First off, I want to start off by thanking my opponent, and then I also want to thank the judge for judging it, as well as the audience members for viewing this and making this possible. So first I want to begin with harms number one. Synthetic fertilizer leads to global warming. Anthropogenic warming is a consensus of the scientific community, Hansen, 2012. The threat of human-made climate change and the urgency of reducing fossil fuel emissions have become increasingly clear to the scientific community. Science, as described in numerous authoritative reports, has re uh, revealed that hu humanity is now the dominant force driving changes of Earth's atmospheric composition, and thus future climate. The climate system's inertia causes climate to respond slowly, but in a very long-lasting way to this human-made forcing. Failure to phase out emissions rapidly will leave young people and future generations with an enormous cleanup job. And synthetic fertilizer increases nitrous oxide, which is directly linked to global warming, Sanders 2012. Samples show a long-term trend in isotopic composition that confirms that nitrogen-based fertilizer is largely responsible for the 20% increase in atmospheric nitrous oxide since the Industrial Revolution. Now, now our study shows empirically that the nitro nitrogen isotope ratio is a fingerprint of fertilizer use. Nitrous oxide destroys strat uh, stratospheric ozone, which is a steep ramp up in atmospheric nitrous oxide coincided when inexpensive synthetic fertilizer and other developments boosted food production. And synthetic fertilizer leads to global warming, multiple internal links, shall 2011. Synthetic or inorganic fertilizers have drastic side effects in the long run. Using too much of these fertilizers in the soil leads to eutrophication. These substances prove to become toxic for the aquatic life, thereby increasing the ex excessive growth of algae in the water bodies and decreasing the levels of oxygen. 50% of the lakes in the United States are eutrophic. Now, fertilizer consists of carbon dioxide, ammonia, and nitrogen, the emission of which has con contributed to a great extent in the quantity of greenhouse gases present in the environment. Nitrous oxide is the third most significant greenhouse gas. And warming causes extinction. Tickle 2008. Global warming on this scale would mean the end of living and the beginning of survival. All the world's coastal plains would be lost, complete with ports, cities, transport, and industrial infrastructure, and much of the world's most productive farmland. Billions would die. Warming caused by human emissions could propel us towards a hothouse earth. Now, observation two, inherency. U.S. farmers use more fertilizer rather than switching to, to being sustainable. Grist 2010. In 1960, farmers in developed and developing countries applied 10 million metric tons of nitro nitrogen fertilizer. In 2005, they applied 100 million metric tons. Modern agriculture, agriculture depends on cheap nitrogen fertilizer. There, uh, there's not much incentive currently to cut back. Farmers get paid by the ton. Many farmers use fertilizer as a form of insurance. Better to apply a little too much and get high yields than apply too little and risk yield and profit declines. Now, our plan for today. Uh, our plan is that farms will be issued EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, grants given that the farm under the United States federal government def definition of being sustainable, namely the elimination of synthetic fertilizer use in favor of more sustainable farming techniques, including but not limited to legume cover crops and biochar. Our funding is $10 million through normal means. Our agency is through Congress. Our timeline is immediately. And our enforcement is through the Environmental Protection Agency. Now I want to move on to our solvency. Solvency number one, the EPA. EPA grants empirically reduce the use of hazardous farming chemicals. Grants will create change, EPA. Commission growers reduce total acres treated with high-risk pesticides by 55% and 72%. Nearly eliminated diazonic chlorpharias. The Sonoma County Grape Growers Association cut use of nine, uh, nine high-risk pesticides by 32%. Now, California almond growers use 77% less orga organic phosphate pesticides. The Dairy Manure, manure Collaborative uh, has goals, including dairy feeding operations, use of manure as a resource, improve soil quality, quality pr uh, provide nutrients for crops, generate renewable energy, create jobs, and reduce contamination of air and water. And transition from synthetic will be easy. Cornell University, 2005. Organic farming offers real advantages. Organic farming not only uses an average of 30% less fossil fossil energy, but also conserve more water, induce less erosion, maintains uh, soil quality, and conserve more uh, resources than conventional farming does. The study compared a conventional farm with an organic animal-based farm and an uh, organic legume-based farm. Now, in this results, over time, the organic systems produced higher yields, especially under drought conditions. Erosion degraded the soil on the conventional farm, while the soil on the organic farms steadily improved. Organic agricultural systems has implications for global warming. Soil carbon in the organic systems increased by 15 to 28 percent. Now, corn yields in the legume-based farms were 22 percent higher than yields in the conventional systems. 
Now, and sustainable farming techniques massively reduces greenhouse gas emissions while utilizing carbon sequestration. Cruz, 2004. Compared to the combined greenhouse gas output associated with fertilizer based and legume based crop cropping systems, in their study, the conventionally agro, agro ecosystem had a net uh, had a net output of 114 for uh, greenhouse gas. The legume based tilled cropping system uh, 41 and no till fertilized agricultural ecosystem as 14. In the long run, the legume based system will have the lowest global warming potential out of out of all the potentials. Thank you. I forgot. All right, so uh, let's go to your second card saying that synthetic fertilizer leads to global warming. Okay. Uh, what in particular does ozone depletion have to do with global warming? Um, well, ozone, as you know, maintains our CO2 in the ozone itself. So with the depletion of our ozone, it lets, lets it out. Uh, doesn't the ozone layer mainly have to do with the protection from ultraviolet rays from the sun? That, that is a significant part. Yes. Okay, thank you. Now let's uh, go on to your Shalu 11 card, also there in your harms. Okay. Uh, let's see. Can you actually go ahead and read a lot of the warrants you had in there why synthetic fertilizer leads to global warming? Yes, uh, it's because of the eutrophication. What is eutrophication? Eutrophication is uh, with the runoffs and uh, other up toxics and toxicities in soil that will lead into water supplies as well as other things, and just like in our lakes, as I described. Well, I understand why toxicity is bad, but how does that specifically lead to an increase in global uh, warming? Well, what it leads to is it leads to increase in algae, and then when there's an increase in algae, there's not enough oxygen for the fish, for which there's too much of it because it absorbs too much oxygen underneath the water, so then the fish die. And it, and it ruins the whole cycle. Okay. Also, uh, let's go on to your plan. Uh, so you're saying that you're going to be having $10 million in funding for uh, your plan, correct? That is correct. Uh, do you know how much funding currently exists in the school for agricultural? Yes, it's uh, less than uh, 500000 500000 in, in total for the entire yeah. agricultural yeah. sector? Yeah, to be exactly, it's about 200000 Not just the EPA, but the entire... The for, entire U.S. federal government funding? No, for this specific. Uh, Just for the EPA? No, it's for this specific for farms, what they have currently right now. It's only 200000 that they have currently. Okay. So we want to increase it to $10 million. Also, so how many, so out of this funding of, of $10 million, how many farms do you think you're actually going to be able to affect? A lot. Do you have a specific number for me? Actually, you know what? Time's up. Thank you. Hey, First off, I'd like to thank my opponent for being here, giving me a good debate today. I'd like to thank the judge for being here and thank the audience as well. I'll be going off case. I have two off case and I'll be going on case. All right, so first, first case on uh, topicality of substantial. My interpretation is, is that the affirmative must be a quantitative increase. The definition is that a substantial increase is at least 30% by Bryce in 2001, Circuit Judge, U.S. Court of Appeals, Federal Circuit. The specification defines substantially increased as at least about 30%, more preferably an increase of about 50%. The violation is that the plan is only a minor increase in financial incentives for agriculture. The billions of dollars of funding that is already provided for farms through various programs, such as the 2012 Farm Bill, far outweighs their plan. Now, uh, now onto the standards. Uh, my definition provides for better preparations and limits. Their inter interpretation destroys limits by allowing hundreds of cases that spend no money. Negatives will not be, not be prepared with relevant positions and evidence against every possible increase in support. Also, better cl clash and ground. Minute increases justify the app to no linking out of disads because they're too small to trigger out of anything. Also, a bright line standard. Compare what the plan spends to existing financial incentives for agriculture. If it is greater than 30%, it meets the, it meets the violation. By defining substantial as noticeable or important, they make it impossible for the judge to make an objective determination of jurisdiction which is unfair. Now, the topicality is a voter for fairness and education. Fairness. Equal preparation for debaters provides for a more fair debate. Fairness is key to debate because without fairness, there is no reason to actually come here and debate because one side will always have an advantage over the other. Also, the education. Education is key to debate also because we are here as a collegiate program. We are not here creating actual policy. Our purpose is to actually learn about a particular topic. And when we, if we can provide for better education, we will actually have a better program for, the, for our colleges. Now, on to my second off case. Politics. Comprehensive immigration reform will pass despite setbacks. Wong 
February 21st. Congress will pass an immigration reform bill that irked Republicans. It won't jeopardize the effort. The president phoned GOP senators to reiterate that he supports the negotiations. Negotiations are moving forward. Information floats out all the time. That shouldn't prevent them from moving forward. We're going to put a bill on the floor. While some differences between the White House and Senate plans exist, on the whole, they are very similar. And the AF plan spends and failure to show spending restraint derails the rest of Obama's agenda. Loopsdorf, January 20, 22nd. The most crucial portion of... Uh, portion of President Barack Obama's inaugural address may have been his brief appeal for making the hard choices to reduce the size of our deficit. That's because the outcome of his forthcoming battle with congressional Republicans on curbing federal spending looms as the necessary precursor to Obama's hopes of achieving the rest of his ambitious second-term agenda. And Obama will have to push the plan and the GOP will have to get on board. They can't afford to alienate the House through controversial plans, so do January 4th. The president seems to be on board and ready for rolling up his sleeves and to get into getting immigration reform, but that won't cut it. The president's support is a necessary condition for any major policy overhaul, but it is not a sufficient condition. Assumes the president can arm wrestle the Senate Democrats and a few Senate Republicans into supporting. Two out of three will not cut it. Repu the Republican-controlled House is what stands in the way of immigration reform. Immigration reform during this year will not be easy, but it's not impossible. And, first, is reform is key to relations Oppenheimer 2012. Immigration reform would have a big economic impact on Mexico and Central America, among other things because the legalization of 11 million undocumented immigrants would prompt many of them to get legal jobs, earn more. But it may also translate into other U.S. initiatives, including closer, closer trade ties with Mexico, Peru, Chile, and other Pacific Rim countries that are part of Obama's proposed Trans-Pacific Partnership Economic Plan. And, reform is key to U.S. competitiveness. Bush at all 09. Our immigration system has been broken, and the costs of that failure are growing. Getting immigration policy right is fundamental to our national interests, our economic vitality, our diplomacy, and our national security. Obama has made it clear that reform is one of his top priorities. Immigration has long been America's secret weapon. The U.S. Attract has attracted an inordinate share of talented and hardworking immigrants. The contributions of immigrants have helped maintain the scientific and technological leadership that is the foundation of our national security. And the U.S. has been making life much tougher for many immigrants. Other countries are taking advantage of these, make of these mistakes, competing for immigrants. And competitiveness is key to the economy and hegemony. Siegel 04. The United States global primacy depends on its ability to develop new technologies and, and industries faster than anyone else. The U.S. scientific innovation and technological leadership has have ensured the country's economic prosperity and military military power. This technological edge may be slipping. Although the United States technical dominance remains solid, the globalization of research and development is exerting considerable pressures on the American system. It can only remain dominant by continuing to innovate faster than everyone else. The United, United States must get better at fostering technological entrepreneurship at home. And a hegemonic decline causes great power wars in 1930s proves Zheng Zhi 2011. No other state has the ability to seriously challenge the U.S. military. Many actors have joined the U.S., creating a status quo that is tended to mute great power conflicts. As the hege hegemony withers, the result will be an international order where the powers more diffuse, American interests and influences can be more readily challenged, and conflicts of war may be harder to avoid. Power decline and redistribution results in military confrontation. In the late 19th century, America's emergence as a regional power saw its launch in its first overseas war of conquest towards Spain. By the turn of the 20th century, accompanying the increase of U.S. power and waning of British power, the American Navy has begun to challenge the notion that Britain rules the waves. What will happen is to these advances as America's influence declines? Given that America's authority, although solely at times, has benefited people, the answer to this question could affect global society in a profoundly detrimental way. A post hegemonic world would return to its problems of the 1930s, regional blocks, trade conflicts, and strategic rivalry. Major powers would comp compete for privacy. A world without American hegemony is one where great power wars reemerge, and the liberal international system is supplanted by an authoritarian one, and trade protectionism devolves into restrictive anti-globalism barriers. Now onto my on-case arguments. First onto their harms. The tagline of their Shulu 11 card states that fertilizers lead to global warming. However, the card itself barely contains any warrant to support their claim. The only relevant warrant states that nitrous oxide is the third most third most significant greenhouse gas, which, as their uh, Sanders 12 card, the second card there in their harms, shows it this only destroys the ozone layer, but this does not significantly contribute to warming. All this does is increase the amount of, of ultraviolet rays, which, can yes, will increase the the risk of skin cancer, this has nothing to do with global warming. The largest contributors to the global warming includes the millions of cars driving on the, on, the, on the road right now and the constant burning of fossil fuels that we have in our society. There is no link between synthetic fertilizer and global warming. Also, there will be no extinction. Re reject this environmental alarmism. Collider informs 2007. 
apocalyptic stories about the irreparable uh, catastrophic damage are blown up to illogical and ridiculous proportions. The alarmists identify an, a legitimate issue, take the possible consequences to an extreme, and advocate action on the basis of these extreme projections. Alarmism is given the more is given more weight than it deserves, as policymakers attempt to appease their constituency and the media. Environmental alarmism should be taken for what it is, a natural tendency for, of the public to latch onto the worst. Now let's go on to their solvency. I uh, extend that, that argument on the, of the weak link to, uh, to global warming to, over to their solvency. Because synthetic fertilizers are such, are such a small contribution to global warming, they can't access their solvency. Eliminating synthetic fertilizers will do nothing to solve for their, pro for their harm of global warming. Therefore, their plan does not actually do anything. Thank you for your time. And I vote a strong, or a strong vote for the negative. All right, first, um, I want to start off by... Uh, I got a question about the uh, substantial problem that you have right now with my term substantial. Uh, how is it that from going from 200,000 all the way up to $10 million is not a substantial increase? It's not substantial in the way of that $10 million compared to what we actually already have in the squo in terms of financial subsidies for agriculture. Okay. and. But isn't what I've stated the two hundred thousand the status quo? If you look at it with blinders on, it does look like it's a, a substantial increase. However, when you look at it, look at it in the grand scale of what the USFG actually does, it's very small. Okay. Okay. Um, now I want to move on and talk about uh, political capital. You mentioned this in your polit uh, uh, politics disad. Uh, you said that the president, if I'm correct, please um, ask if I'm correct, that the president does not have a political capital to pass my plan and immigration, correct? Correct. Okay, so how much political capital will the president need to pass my plan and immigration? There's Political capital isn't a substantial, isn't a tangible substance. You can't measure it. However, what we can know is this, is that if we do pass your plan, mm -hmm. it is going to immediately derail what the president okay. will be doing. It okay. can't be both. Okay, so it's not tangible and you cannot actually count it, then how is it that you needed to pass my plan? It exists. The fact of, we know the fact that the president has, has willpower and has influence o over Congress. That is a known fact. There's no way to measure influence. Well, you can measure everything in the universe, so how is it that it exists, but yet you can't measure it and tell me exactly how much it is? That's like trying to measure charisma and intelligence. There's no yeah. way to do that. Okay. First off, I want to start by thanking my opponent again for providing this great debate here today. I want to thank the judge himself, as well as the audience members. Uh, so first, I want to begin off the topic, uh, off case on top of calorie, then I'll move on case, and then uh, I'll move off case on the politi uh, politics to say. So let's begin. Top of calorie is significant. Uh, we meet their definition. According to the EPA, a Region 9 generally awards two to three grants a year, varying from between $50,000 and $100,000, and we're increasing that from over to $10 million. So that's a huge, that's more than the 30%, in which uh, my opponent has argued that we did not uh, make it because it didn't meet the 30% increase requirement. But we do. Uh, we deserve leeway on quantities. Legal definition in words and phrases goes from less than 1% to 90%. The term substantial is designed to give flexibility in contextual interpretations, not to serve as a specific, uh, specific uh, specifying competing interpretations. We deserve leeway and reasonable, reasonableness because topicality is an all or nothing issue for us. Uh, Malkoff 92, a law professor at UCLA. Substantial is a flexible, uh, is as flexible in the law as ordinary English, and it's a place for discretion. Now, our standards is that we encourage cre creativity and a depth of analysis. We don't agree with their standards. Uh, and that affirmative, we should be encouraged to look into details of different forms of support. This leads into in-depth and creative discussions. Our interpretation allows that. There stops it by focusing only on big numbers. They have no bright line. Their specification of percentage threshold is arbitrary. We deal with considerable and important issues, as our case evidence illustrates. And that's enough for a good debate. Uh, our literature checks abuse. We read cards founded in the lit or literature. This is enough notice for the negative. They can Google the words in advance and find the same cards we read. This is not a voting issue, Judge, and we provide for better education and fairness than their interpretation. So, therefore, I believe that we should vote that ours is topical.
Now, um, I want to move on case and do an overview of global warming real quick. Our first extend, first extend Hansen 2012 that human operations are the driving force behind the shifting climate and our synthetic fertilizers have played a significant role in this shift. Extend standards 2012 synthetic fertilizer is linked to a 20% increase in nitrous oxide alone, which doesn't take into account emissions that are produced during the production, production of these fertilizers. As Shao 2011 explains, Fertilizers are linked to global warming through the contamination of our biosphere and water eutrophication. And as, and as uh, my Tickle 2008 evidence shows, global warming will lead to our extinction. Now, I want to move on to our solvency. I access solvency for uh, two reasons. First, extend the EPA empirically reduces chemicals card. Uh, the plan will greatly reduce the use of synthetic fertilizers. Then extend the Cruise 2004 card and that conventional farms produce almost 300% more greenhouse gases than the type of farms created through this bill. And that sustainable farming reverses uh, global warming trends, pull us back from the brink, uh, Lynch 2011. Organic farming generally has lower energy than greenhouse gas emissions. Greenhouse gas emissions are constantly lower, and the main reasons for better organic performance are the lack of synthetic fertilizers. Now I want to move off case onto the politics disad. The, the co comprehensive immigration reform won't pass. Congress cannot agree on path to citizenship, so their argument saying that we don't have enough political capital means nothing. That's called into Foley 2007. The biggest fight on immigration reform will be a pathway to citizenship. Republicans might support undocumented uh, but not to become citizens. Only 10% of American voters support such a plan. Winners win and winners win is empirically more true than the link to the dissat. Uh, number one, the political capital is not uh, finite as as we discussed in the cross-examination, wins on tough issues create a bandwagon effect. And number two, prefer our evidence. It's about Obama's second term and cites the best acad uh, academic data, including uh, Norman Ornston. And this is according to Hirsch, 2009. Now, in unquantifiable but meaningful concepts, says Norm Ornston, Norman Ornston of the American Enterprise Institute is what the political capital is. Uh, now, the winners win and winners win. Green 2010, there's continuous and reciprocal relations between presidential boldness and achievement. Nothing sets the president up for achieving his next goal better than succeeding dramatically on the last go around. Therefore, I believe you should vote for my plan. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to be just be going off topicality, then politics, and I'll be going on case. So first off, onto topic, Kelly. I'm just going to go right down by the line by line why this debate has been completely unfair this entire time. First off, on my interpretation, I, I provided the card saying that our definition must be at least 30%. This provides a, a great bright line. Why? It's 30%. If we look at what the current threshold is of the billions currently provided, for example, through the 2012 Farm Bill, we have to provide at least a 30% increase or more than this. Let's look at his plan here on this violation. All he's doing is providing a... 10 million dollar increase through the EPA. Well, he's trying to skew you look this look over here saying that oh look, the EPA is only providing $200,000 right now a year. That is not that's just ridiculous. We have to look at what the USFG is doing in total because that is what the resolution demands that the USFG should act. And if we look at what the USFG is doing, they are providing billions of dollars in funding. And so with their $10 million increase is only a thousandth of a percent increase. They are not topical in any way to substantial. And the standards here are, once again, it's going to be better preparation of limits. It our, my, my interpretation provides for better clash and grounds, and it provides a bright line standard, which theirs does not. His definition, all, all he's saying is that we can provide any number that we want. That is not a good enough bright line. This destroys all fairness, all grounds, and all education that we currently have right now. If you take his interpretation, there is no fairness in the round, and the, and the affirmative can run any plan that they want, giving me absolutely no way to provide any, any ground so that I can actually get an argument that will link to their to their case. That is why you must vote for my interpretation. Now going on to politics. Uh, my ev ev evidence that I provided is much more recent than the uniqueness arguments that he provided. Uh, that's why I want to go ahead and extend the fact that comprehensive immigration reform is going to pass right now. This is this is uh, the card that he decided to read what is much older and has no actual frame of reference to the squo. Also uh, onto the link. I'm going to turn back the winner's win argument. The presidential term uh, 
is uh, is plagued with many wins and losses. There's no way to actually prove winners win. It's not empirical. President Obama has ha has had a lot of wins, but he's also had a lot of losses throughout his first term and already into his second term. The winners win is not a good argument. That's why I want to go ahead and turn that back, and that's why I'm winning on the link argument. I also want to go ahead and extend my Lubsdorf card, saying the fact that we have to cut that any increased spending on Obama's part that he that he is supporting is that is going to upset the rest of his plan. And what that would do is that would upset and cause comprehensive immigration reform to fail. Uh, that go ahead and uh, know the internal link story. Uh, the passing of the plan leads to the uh, no, no passage of the compre comprehensive immigration reform, and this is all conceded here. He never even touched on this. And the fact that once the compre uh, once there's no immigration reform, that decreases our com uh, competitiveness through Im through the uh, immigrant. Lower, lower amounts of immigrants. Uh, this leads to the destruction of our economy and the hegemony. And also, once our hegemony declines, this is going to lead to nuclear war. As I showed this in my first speech, he never touched on this. He concedes the fact that once we, he passes the plan, it is going to go down this link story in the fact that we are all going to die. That is why we cannot pass this plan. If we pass this plan, there is absolutely no world in which we live. However, if we do pass it, we can get the immigration reform and we can avoid all these ter terrible effects and we can have an ink increased hegemony and also an increased economy. That is why we cannot pass his plan. Now going on case, his, har his harms are just are absolutely ridiculous throughout this entire debate. He has absolutely no link to global warming. He's tried tried to wiggle out of this by saying that there's, there's some eutrophication how, and the, you know there's some destruction of the ozone layer. This doesn't have actually anything to do with global warming. There are no increase in temperatures. He has not, he has not linked his, himself to global warming in any way, shape, or form. And, he does, and he, not only that, but he doesn't respond to the argument that I put out there that most of the CO2 in our, uh, in our atmosphere right now is actually coming from other human operations. So the, the massive amounts of cars on the road and the use and our uh, that we're always doing. He never responded to this. Now, also going on to the solvency, I want to go extend that argument I just made over the solvency. He has absolutely no solvency because he can't solve for global warming because there's no link from synthetic fertilizer to global warming. Thank you. All right, first, I just want to thank you all one more last time. Um, I'm going to go to just top and then move on to the disadvantage of politics, disadvantage, and then I'm going to... Uh, Show you how mine outweighs theirs. So let's begin. Uh, definition. Their definition was substantial for topicality. Is that they say that increases at least thirty percent. We meet their definition. We absolutely do. And um, I've shown this because of the fifty to one hundred percent, a hundred thousand uh, dollars in the actual definition on average for the actual amount that they give to these farmers. So increasing that to ten million is an increase that's over thirty thousand. Uh, he said the violation is that our plan is only a minor increase. That's not true. I just proved to you that it's not. So that's why this top county really has, holds no validity here. And their standards that are better preparation and limits. They have the same opportunities that we do to look it up on the internet or through any kind of dictionaries or anything else to find the same cards and cut the same cards that we do. So this is not giving us any type of advantage at all. It says that it's causing better. Uh, it's not causing better clashing ground. They have absolutely the same amount of clashing ground that they do at any other time because again they can look it up on their own and they know they, it's reasonable. It's within our terms. Uh, the, our bright line, there is no bright line. I've already addressed this numerous amount of times. Um, now we'll move on to this as a politics. Uh, again, all their politics and that we won't pass their comprehensive immigration reform. Y yes, that, that's bad, but even if that is true, I believe that we will, we can pass both. But even if it is, if it is true, ours outweighs theirs significantly. Because this ha will have no effect, the politics disadvantage of theirs will have no effect whatsoever if the world doesn't exist because of global greenhouse gases increasing so much and that global warming effects occur. We won't, we won't need to have this passed if we don't have our Earth or any people to survive on it. So ours clearly outweighs theirs because theirs doesn't have a thing that impacts every single human being on this face of the earth. Instead, theirs has one minority of individuals that we can, I believe we can pass both. And it, it, I really can't see any kind of arguments that would make it so that they win. So therefore, I urge you to vote for my plan and that we will help save the earth.